Hello there Retro Heads, welcome back to A Hermit Hideaway with me, Benny Williams. Uh, it's been a while since my last video, so I thought I'd better get myself into gear. Um, I've got a week off this week, so I thought I'd better do one. It's a, another SNES box video, this is going to be box four. I've got two more boxes left after this, unless I may have a sixth box if I manage to pick up any more by the time I've finished doing these and then I'm going to move on to some of the other consoles and uh, I'm going to try and not just do Nintendo and get it out of the way because I know there's some Sega fans that want to see some love for the Mega Drive and things like that and I've got some Mega Drive games. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this video to my friend Top 10 Retro which is named Johnny. Uh, Johnny always comments on my videos and interacts with me a lot and I really appreciate that, he's a really nice guy. So thank you very much Johnny and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just a couple more quick shout outs I'd like to make as well. Uh, my buddy Kieran from Transatlantic Retro who I'm now a part of the podcast. Kieran gave me a shout out on one of his videos and he's got a really great channel called Retro Tech 100 so please check him out. He's going from strength to strength. Uh, finally I'd just like to say a big hello and welcome to my new subscribers. For a while I was stuck on 47 and now I'm up to 54 I believe so I'm very pleased with that. I've got over the 50 mark now so very happy and I do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to see me do you know always feel free to just drop, me, drop a message or a comment and just let me know what you'd like to see. Um, there is something that I would like to ask of you all. Um, I'm going to start doing gameplays of the SNES games, I think it's about time, and I'm going to do some gameplays on Commodore 64 games and things like that in due time, but I'd just like you to choose a game from these first four SNES videos that I've done so far, and just uh, leave a comment or again send me a message, tell me what you'd like to see me to play. And of course I'm going to try and make sure that there's commentary with it so it's not just going to be just filming the gameplay with no talking. So starting off with box 4, we have a game from my childhood called Mr Nuts. Um, this game really should be called Hard as Nuts because it really is. The, the game is so brutal but I've got a love-hate relationship with this game. It's been well over 20 years I've had it and I've never ever managed to beat it and I'll tell you the reason why. It's so damn difficult, it's a beautiful platformer, so well presented, the graphics are absolutely stunning for the game, the gameplay is there, the collision detection is spot on, but the main issue with this game is that you get continues and then when you hit continue you think you're going to start on maybe the same world area as where you died, but no. The continue sends you right back to the very beginning of the game, making the continues absolutely pointless. So I've got a bit of a feud with this game and I do need to try and beat it one day finally, just to say I finally beat it, but you know, it's a, it's a lovely, great game, but it's so frustratingly hard, mainly because of the the reason of starting again from the beginning when you continue that it's just I dread the, the idea of having to play it again to be honest so that was Mr Hard as Nuts for game number one. Uh, for game number two I've got Pinball Fantasies which I picked up a couple of years ago now I've not got round to playing it I'm a bit slack like that, I don't bother really testing my games and I really should want to get them but I'm quite lucky they do seem to work and just a bit of rubbing alcohol will probably help give them a kickstart if there is any issues anyway. I bought this in a bundle of games and uh, I think I paid 30 quid and I've got about 6 games, you've seen a couple of them in one of the previous Smith's Box videos but yeah not much more to say about that one unfortunately and Maybe I'll do a gameplay on it in the future. So next up, got Super Troll Islands, and 
Again, uh, I've got this in that same bundle where I've got the six games for £30. I played this game via emulation. It actually seems like quite a decent game, to be honest. The graphics are quite pleasant and the, the gameplay seems to be there. And Obviously, it's aimed at children, but I'm a sucker for platformer. I love platform games. So. Again, the standards, all of these games, perhaps one day I will get round to doing some gameplay videos on them with any luck. Next up, we've got Mickey Mania. I paid £6 for this at Revival, the, the first one that was held at the Bezcott Stadium. So the first Revival I went to was a Winter Warmer, and the next one was the big event, the main event, which was two years ago now. I paid £6 for that, which is pretty good because it goes between £10 to £14 normally when I see it. Uh, nice game. Really good game, just very difficult. Again, typical Disney platformer game, but it, it is a really tough game and really tough. So I've not really got too far into it because I normally get frustrated with it and turn it off. But when I've got a bit of time and a bit more patience and perseverance, then I'll give it another go. Another game I've had since my childhood, Super Swift. It's a vertical shmup, and it's not a great game to be honest. I don't really enjoy it too much. It's quite cool because you got obviously uh, your plane here, which you control, or you can control the tank. And although it's quite smooth and fluid movements, I guess at the time I wasn't really into shmups as much, but I've grown to love and appreciate them over the last couple of years. So I have to revisit that and give it another chance, benefit of the doubt. I believe I played this in the arcade, and the arcade version was much better, and I quite enjoyed that one. Another game from my childhood, which uh, I picked up a few months ago. I, didn't, I think I paid about £8 for a thing, which wasn't too bad. Which Frantic Flea, again, another platform game. The aim of this game is that you're a big flea, and you've got to go around collecting smaller fleas and they're on different platforms and you can I think you can spin a bit like Tasmania in a way and there's all sorts of obstacles uh, there's electric equipment like electrical pylons that try and zap you and things and there's um, broken broken wires so there's exposed contacts and, and exposed wires that can zap you and you've got a basically round up all these little fleas together until you get a small army of them and they follow you around but you when you get hit you lose quite a few of them and you've got to round them back up again. Uh, it can be quite frustratingly difficult at times. I remember being quite good and getting quite far on it as a child but I've only played it once since getting this game. I haven't played it for very long. Uh, I believe this is another childhood game, unless this was from my wife's collection. Uh, this is The Hunt for the Red October, and sadly, I've had it bloody years and years, whether that was through my wife, which is nearly 10 years now that I would have had this, or if it was a childhood game, I've had it all my life and never really played it, sadly. So I really must correct that at some point, and this one I will do a gameplay of, but I don't want you to choose this as the game that I do for my uh, SNES Let's Play because I just want you to choose something else but I will do a gameplay of this because I haven't played it and I think I've got to correct that. Uh, another game I had from my childhood, it is brutally difficult but it is so so good, it's Battletoads and Battlemania. Uh, this is an arcade port and it's a really really good arcade port. This is voted as one of the hardest SNES games of all time and I can see why. I can normally get to the level just after where you're sort of on a surfboard and you've got ramps and these walls that appear and you've got to, you've got to control your surfboard and try and navigate up and down. You go between the, the background and the foreground, you can just press up and you can press down to try and avoid these obstacles. But it is brutally difficult, it really is. But nevertheless, 
it's a fantastic game and it's actually one I'd love to see this make a comeback to something like the Switch if they did a brand new Battletoads game and maybe in the style of uh, you know, Double Dragon there is a Battletoads and Double Dragon SNES game but it's set in the Battletoads universe but I would quite like to see them you know, go out, updated graphics, brand new sort of thing, you know, sort of like Double Dragon meets Golden Axe would be perfect for something like this if it was redone, I think. Now here is another game from my childhood. Uh, it's an original game, like a lot of these that I have because I was a bit of a hoarder and never really got rid of any of them. This one is Clay Fighter. And they did a sequel to this on the Super Nintendo, and then I think they did, they certainly did another one called Sculptor's Cut on the N64, but I think there was two on the N64 as well. I could be mistaken, no take that for Gospel, but I know there was definitely the Sculptor's Cut at least, which is quite a rare N64 game. I remember enjoying this as a child, I was quite good at it then. I recently tried to play it with my brother-in-law and I was absolutely terrible at it. I couldn't remember any of the names. But it's one of those sort of generic beat-em-ups where all the sort of the moves are the same sort of thing where you do like a half moon or own D pad and press A or B, something like that. But you know, I'd love to learn the moves for it again. But I, I say it's a, a generic beat them up which it is but the characters are quite unique and they've got a really groovy bunch of characters on it. Uh, so next game I got Spin Dizzy Worlds. I got this from Revival of Winter Warmer and this was in a bargain basket and it was going for free in the end. I didn't actually see this at the store because this was from Vintage Gamer who they're a great great retro shop and they often uh, do a trade store at Revival which hopefully Revival are doing another Winter Warmer this year, which will be brilliant, I can't wait for that. Um, so yeah, this was £4. I couldn't find it when I was looking through the games. Oddly, it was quite strange, because I didn't see any game for under sort of like 6 or £7, and then these appeared. They may have just been in the box out the back, and they just wanted to clear them and get rid of them, but um, I... I think this was on the, the NES as well. I had, I had the one on the NES, but I never played this one. Next up, we've got James Pond Crazy Sports. Again, this was in the bargain bin for free from Vintage Gamer. Uh, the, this was on the, the Sunday towards the end of it that we're just getting rid of some of the games. So. And again, it must have just been out of the back because I don't remember seeing this in the row of games when I was looking through them when I was there. Otherwise, I would have paid the, the £4 for these games because, you know, any SNES game under £5 is definitely worth it. Again, never played it, but I will at some point. And another one from their bargain bin, which is £3. Uh, this game normally goes between sort of 7 to 10 normally, I think. But uh, it's not a game that I've played. It's really weird because it sort of looks like the Super Famicom version of Burger Time, but I know it's not. It's Pierre Le Chef out to lunch. And by all accounts, it's quite a good game. So this is another one that I will do gameplay of in the future, but not any time soon, I don't think. Because... I want you guys to choose the game I play. This next game I got is an original game. I think I bought it from the Birmingham market when it used to be an outdoor market by the, the they've got a big massive indoor market now and I think they've still got part of the outdoor market but it used to be a really well a decent size outdoor market should I say, not a really big one but um, how much should I pay for this at that time? £5 for this, which would have been about the going rate for a pre-owned game. It's Total Carnage. Total Carnage is the spiritual successor to Super Smash TV. I believe that Smash TV came out before this, I could be wrong, but I believe this was the spiritual successor to it. It's done by, this is done by Malibu Games apparently, but it is the same sort of twin stick shooter but it works so well on the snares pad for some reason which I don't know how they managed to put it off but 
it is very smooth and it's it's like a combination of Commando meets Smash TV and it's a great game, I absolutely love it and it's got the same sort of tongue in cheek cutscenes with the um, the evil the evil boss and our tribal whatever you want to call them. But I used to really enjoy this. Um, like Super Smash TV, it's much better to play this game two player. It is a hell of a lot of fun. I've never played the arcade port though, I'm sure there is an arcade port of that. Or that is a port of the arcade shite say even. So uh, next up is another original game in really nice condition actually. But I don't think I ever really played it that much because I wasn't really too much into the fighters back then, only a, a, like three or four, not all of them. And this one is Primal Rage. I don't remember a lot about this game at all. Um, the game seems to be in too nice a condition actually to perhaps be one of my original games, but I'm sure it is. I'm sure I don't remember buying this on eBay or anything, which is where I would have got it from a few years ago if I had bought it. But not really played it, I've not really heard many great things about it to be honest, which is probably why I've never really gotten around to it. So let's just move on. And next one is an original game, this one's really weird because I've always thought it's a Super Famicom game, it's actually a PAL game. It was a PAL only title and there was two of them, two different games in uh, from the same sort of thing. It is a Poyo Poyo clone and it is, let's see if I've got this right, a Berkey's Papito. Um, I remember I used to get quite frustrated with this as a lad because I just I wasn't very good at it, didn't really understand it. Sunsoft are a great company and they do really great puzzle sort of games and they did the Bombman series and stuff like that. Um, I probably enjoy it more nowadays if I went back to it, so that's another one for a future Let's Play. Um, so yeah, that was a good game and there was those two of those. And finally, uh, I think Now, I could be mistaken with this, but I've got, look, basically this is an ice hockey game, I've got two ice hockey games. One of them is an original game which I had as a child, and one of them I bought again uh, a few years ago on eBay, I can't remember which way around it is, but this one is NHLPA Hockey 93, and my friend Sean from Transatlantic Retro is a huge hockey fan. He loves his ice hockey games, so that one's for you, bud. There you go, marvel at that. He'll probably turn around and say, oh, it's better on the Megasys than, the, uh, than on the Super Nintendo, no doubt. But And I know it's Mega Drive or Genesis, but we, we fondly call it the Megasys. So that was box four. That was all my games from the box. I hope you enjoyed that. Please give me a like, send me a comment if you want to ask anything far away. Um, and if from the four boxes that I've shown you, if you want to choose a game and see what you'd like me to do a gameplay of, please uh, just give me a shout and let me know. If you do enjoy this channel, please recommend it to your friends and ask them to subscribe, that'd be absolutely great. So thanks for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time.